nobody likes clutters because they are distracting, it takes us longer to clean and organize, and they are just not pleasant to look at. Even though I'm a firm believer in decluttering, I think having a clutter-free wardrobe is not just about how to remove things, but how we make the purchase as well. For me, doing low buy is a lot more sustainable than constantly throwing things out. So let's talk about the best ways to shop for a clutter-free wardrobe. First and foremost, before you buy anything, always ask yourself, where are you going to store this item and do you even have the space for it? Or is it possible you might end up shoving this item to the back of your closet and forget you even have it? And I get it because this was something I used to overlook myself as well. You know, when you get so excited about something, you just want to bring it home and you will try to figure the rest out later. Well, in my experience, for me to use something often, I have to have easy access to it. And if I have to move mountains, go to the garage, open boxes or go through layers of clothing to get to the item, I most likely wouldn't be bothered. I'll just use something else. Personally, I don't store my bags, shoes or clothes in the storage. Everything is kind of in the open and ready to go for me in my closet for all seasons. Having everything out in plain sight not only makes access easier, it also gives me a clear picture about how much I actually have and not just a small section of it. The second tip to shop for a clutter-free wardrobe is to always take into account the aftercare for the item before making the purchase. Put another way, are you prepared to care for the item the way it should be? Because certain materials do require more care than the others. For example, I love silk because the material is soft and kind on the skin. So I now use silk pillowcases and I wear silk pajamas. However, if you want your silk pieces to look smooth and seamless, you have a bit of ironing to do. This is why I love wearing silk pieces at home where I can just relax and no one will see me. But I am a bit more reserved when it comes to adding silk blouses. Similarly, certain elements in our wardrobe will require dry cleaning. And if you do dry cleaning often, you know it can get expensive. And if you are talking about a shilling gilet or a leather jacket, those pieces will require specialist cleaning. I now always look at the care instructions before buying anything, especially for elements that I wear a lot or things that will be in close contact with my skin. I try to avoid pieces that can only be dry cleaned. This way I can limit the dry cleaning section in my wardrobe to a more manageable portion. When it comes down to it, having a clutter-free wardrobe really just means making use of everything we have. So if you feel like you have a lot of elements that you avoid wearing because they are hard to maintain, paying more attention to your care requirement will really help to reduce your clutter going forward. Another question to ask ourselves before buying anything is, do I already have something similar? The other day, I was looking at this outfit on Selena Gomez and I thought she looked absolutely amazing. So I tried to create a similar look using what I already have. Now my poncho is longer, I carry a different Louis Vuitton bag and I'm not wearing high heels so we're not wearing exactly the same outfits but I actually like that I've made the outfit my own by adding my own twist to it. Besides, why try to look exactly like someone else when you can be you? I think it's always better to use social media for inspirations and not aspirations. For example, these are my Jimmy Choo flats they are beautiful and I rave about them, but there are many other similar alternatives out there and you probably already have something quite similar in your shoe collection. So buying these Jimmy Choo's might just be redundant. In today's world especially, shopping has become so convenient and friction-free and we've been conditioned to think shopping is the only answer. And I used to think the same. For every wedding I was invited to, I had to buy a new dress, like there was no other way around it. Now that I have a smaller wardrobe, I can attest that shopping your own closet is not just a saying or a cliche, it can actually be a very fun and creative way to keep your wardrobe clutter free. Moving on, so let's say you've come to the conclusion that you really do enjoy something. I think now a very valid question to ask yourself is, 
Do I really need multiple? For example, I really enjoy my Chanel espadrilles. I think they look nice on me and they go well with a lot of things I have. So for a while, I wanted to add another pair to my shoe collection. The two pairs of espadrilles I was looking at were the Gucci and the YSL ones. Now, it might not seem excessive to have two pairs of espadrilles, but I eventually decided I don't need another pair because I really only wear my Chanel espadrilles when it's hot and dry out there. And in the UK, we just don't get many days like that. On the other hand, I really like my earrings and I enjoy rotating my pieces. So it makes sense for me to have multiple pieces. Along the same line, I also own two pairs of Acne Studio Boots and two pairs of Roger Vivi Flats because I enjoy wearing them so much. So it all depends. I personally don't object the idea of having multiples because sometimes we do need more than one to allow cleaning and to even out wear and tear. But if these multiples start to outnumber what we can physically wear, then they might actually become clutters. So I don't think there's a set rule for this. It's not like you can only have one item for every section in your wardrobe. But just being intentional about having multiples can really help your wardrobe to stay clutter-free. Another really useful tip to have a clutter-free wardrobe is to always think of returning as a possibility. Put another way, always prepare yourself for a change of mind and allow yourself the option to remove the clutter before it's too late. For example, don't be too quick to remove the tag no matter how excited you are. Always retain the proof of purchase and make sure you keep all the packaging to make returning as easy as possible. I now always check the return policy before buying anything and I usually prefer websites that offer free return and a longer returning time frame. Another really important question to ask ourselves before buying anything is, will this item blend in with everything else you already have? Because the last thing you want is to have to purchase more things just to complement this item. Many of us have made somewhat innocent purchases. We buy a luxury handbag because it's cute, even though it might not go with our outfits. We then buy a jacket because the color is one of a kind, even though it's not something we will wear. Or we might buy a pair of high heels because they look nice on Jessica Alba. Your optimism might tell you, you will make it work. But trust me, compounding effect is real and it can work against you. For example, I used to have a Chanel wallet on chain and the Celine Nano luggage tote in bright red color. I found the color really hard to style with what I already had. So I started buying pink t-shirts, white blouses and light color jeans just to make these two bags wearable. Before long, I didn't just have two expensive handbags that I didn't enjoy using. I now also had a lot of other things I wish I didn't buy. So it doesn't really matter if you are a neutral person or someone who really enjoys colors. Having a cohesive wardrobe is key to keep your wardrobe clutter-free. I think a very useful rule of thumb to go by is if you feel like you have to make something work. That is exactly the reason this item shouldn't make it to your wardrobe. I also want to touch on sale because a lot of my clutters were items I bought on sale or strictly speaking, because of sale. Looking back, a lot of my sale shopping was driven by a sense of urgency. I mean, the sale wouldn't last forever. So it's either now or never, right? So it's no surprise how a lot of those seemingly good bargains eventually became clutters in my wardrobe. The lesson I've learned from this is, if I didn't want something before the sale, I probably don't want it at the discount either. Now, after years of shopping and stocking the sales section, I now have an idea about what might go on sale. So I tend to do a lot of my shopping during the sales seasons, such as Black Friday and Boxing Day. It's a great way to save money. So I'm not saying you shouldn't buy anything on sale, but the problem comes when we buy something just because it's on sale. You see, when something is discounted at 30% off, we prefer to tell ourselves we are saving $30. But the truth is, we are spending $70. So it makes sense to just focus on our wishlist items because all the other amazing bargains might just become some expensive clutters in our wardrobe. 
So those are my shopping tips for a clutter-free wardrobe as a luxury minimalist. Feel free to share your other suggestions down below. I really appreciate you guys and I will see you soon. Thank you.